was asking for custody of their eight-year-old daughter, something the doctor was resisting. When police told Denise that her husband had been murdered, <laughs> oh, she appears to have been punished. Oh, it No, I'm not giving you a whole thing. Good Lord. You Here's just roll around in it. It'll all be dead in a day or two, and that'd be the end of that. I have to order another tone. <laughs> Takes days to get here. Police placed Denise Davidson under 24 hour surveillance. Three days later, Denise made an unusual trip. She walks back to the coast of the West Coast. When she leaves, we walk in right behind her and determine that she's using West Coast and she sends a $1,200 money transfer. Denise had used an alias for the transfer. Look at that. The money was sent to a Robert Gordon in Miami. It's being sent by a phone yeah. in white. Which is not Denise Davis's name. It's obvious that's a different name. Fictitious address. Fictitious phone number. But we watched her send it. Gotta hate the paparazzi. Robert Gordon was an acquaintance of Miami nightclub owner Leo Cisneros who also happened to be Denise Davidson's current boyfriend and the father of her unborn child. Cisneros allegedly had ties to Jamaican drug trafficking. Flight records indicated that Leo Cisneros flew to Jamaica on the day of Dr. Davidson's murder. And telephone records indicated that Denise Davidson made numerous calls to Robert Gordon Yummy. Her husband was murdered. Between yeah. Between 9.30 in the morning and 11.30 in the morning. Well, two hour period. Yeah. There are 52 telephone calls made from Denise Davidson's house. Cardboard and the, the catnip. Investigators now believe that Denise Davidson knew more about her husband's murder than she admitted. And they asked the court for permission to wiretap her telephone. That order was granted, but it didn't reveal what investigators hoped for. Cisneros was in Jamaica.